Okay, so biggest thing out of chapter seven is your exponent properties. Do you guys remember your exponent properties? If you see a number raised to an exponent times the same number raised to an exponent, what do you do with your exponents? You add them. Anything to the zero power is one, yes, except zero. Zero to the zero is not one, but any other number to the zero is one. What's another property? Powers raised to powers. And these are not in any particular order, by the way. What do you do with powers raised to powers? You multiply. What else we got? What do you do when you divide numbers with the same or same base with the exponents? You subtract them. Um, what do we do with? I'll just move over here. What do we do with negative exponents? You flip them, so it becomes 1 over x to the, and then it becomes a positive a, right? Um, what do you do when you have two different numbers both raised to a power? They both get the power. And that's true for multiplication as well as division. So if you have x divided by y, that's x to the a over y to the a. Do you need to have your properties memorized? Not really. But the bigger thing is you be able to use those properties. So what I mean is if you have something like 2x squared y to the third all raised to the fourth over 4x to the negative third y squared. I need you to be able to simplify that. So what's the first thing you could do to simplify this? Well, what do you do when you have multiple things raised to a power? Each part has to get that. So that 2 has to get raised to the 4th power. This x squared has to get raised to the 4th power. And what do you do with powers raised to powers? Now you multiply, so that would be x to the 8th. And the y would be raised to the 12th, right? So we've already used two properties, right? We used multiple things raised to the power, and we used powers raised to powers. Okay. Now what can we do? What do you do with negative exponents? Flip them, so these x to the thirds go to the top, and then what do you do with x to the eighth times x to the third? What are you going to do with those exponents? You're going to add them together, so you're going to have 11 x in the top. What do you do when you divide? Subtract, so where's my leftovers? Top or bottom? top, and I'd have 10, and then 2 to the 4th is 2, times 2 is 4, 8, 16. What do I do with that 16 and that 4? What's 16 divided by 4? So my final answer would just be 4, x to the 11th, y to the 10th. I guarantee you there's going to be some questions on this exam where all you have to do is simplify using your exponent properties. Fair enough? That right there is basically half of your, half of your test. Um, or half of this chapter. Be careful with problems like these. Or a problem like this. Do those negatives cancel?
These could be three consecutive problems on your exam. Do these negatives cancel? No. What do you do with negative exponents? You flip them. Does this negative actually even go with that three? No. That would be the same thing as one over negative two to the positive three. And then this is actually the same thing as one over negative two times two times two, which would actually be just negative one eighth. What's the only difference with that one? Got an extra two. Is this one going to end up being positive or negative? This is, why is this one going to be negative? Does, when you flip this and you say it's one over negative two to the fourth, is this negative also raised to the fourth power? No, there's only one negative sign here. The answer is negative one sixteenth. This one, what happens when the ne negative's in the parentheses like that? Now you flip it, and now you basically have negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. So yes, you have four negatives, so that'd be positive one sixteenth. These are easy multiple choice questions. I mean, I can give you two questions right back to back. One could just say negative two to the negative two. And the next question, negative two to the negative two. This answer, negative exponent, you flip it. Is this going to be positive or negative one-fourth? This one's negative because that negative is not part of the squared. This one would be positive one-fourth. I mean, I can give you these two questions and not even have A through D, just give you choice A and B. Like, you've got a 50-50 chance on those. Are we good with those? Um, let's see. So that's really about half the chapter other than How do you write that in scientific notation? Where do I want the decimal? Between the 7 and the 4, so it would be 7.4 and then 318, whatever, times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th power. If I give you 0.00000214, where do I want the decimal? Between the 2 and the 1? And then I moved it. One, two, three, four, five. This would be negative six. Remember, small numbers, negative exponents. Be able to put things in scientific notation, be able to take them out of scientific notation, be able to use scientific notation to multiply or divide numbers like this. This would be the same thing as 4 times 10 to the 3, 6, 7. This would be the same thing as 2 times 10 to the 3, 6, 9. What's the answer? What's four times two? Eight. Eight times 10 to the, what do you do with the exponents? 16, you add them together. So be able to multiply or divide really big or really small numbers 
using scientific, nota scientific notation. Easy? Um, that's just more exponent stuff. That's just more exponent stuff. Ooh, easy ones. Naming polynomials. Do you remember what a polynomial is called that has one term? Like 3x squared, that has one term. That's called a monomial. What's a two binomial? And that would be something like 3x squared minus 4, right? What's 3 trinomial? What's 4 or more polynomial? Okay. What do we call something that has a degree of 0 constant? And that's like... 7. Degree of 1, like 4x, linear. Degree 2, quadratic. Degree 3, cubic. Degree 4, quartic. Uh, five? Huh? Quintic. And then anything, we don't really have any names after that. So, yeah, again, think these are really easy multiple choice questions for me to write. I'll give you something like this. And say, name that polynomial. That's a... Degree 2, so that'd be a quadratic binomial. If I put a plus 7, now it's a quadratic trinomial. Simple enough? Um, be able to find the degree. If I give you... 7x to the 4th minus 2x squared minus 8. What's the degree of that polynomial? Huh? It's not 2. What's the degree of this part? 4. Degree of that? So what's the degree of the whole thing? 4. It's the biggest one. What if I give you 3x squared y to the 4th plus 7x to the 3rd y squared? What's the degree of this thing? What do you do when you have multiple variables in one term? You add them together. So the degree of this is 6. This is 5. And then what's the degree of the whole thing? Now it's the biggest one. Okay. And yeah, I can give you this as an easy multiple choice and say what's the degree? And the choices would be two, you know, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. Three, four, five, six, seven. Um, would probably put eleven as a choice because some people would add them all together. So. Um, let's see. Yeah, adding or subtracting polynomials, I think you guys are good at. Like if I give you 7x squared plus 2x minus 8, add or subtract 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. How do you subtract polynomials? Change that to a plus. But if you change that, you have to 
everything in here. So this would become a minus, this would become a plus, this would become a negative, then just combine like terms. What is 7x squared plus a negative 3x squared? It would be 4x squared. What's 2x plus 5x? 7x. What's negative 8 plus negative 2? Negative 10. Good with those? And then multiplying polynomials. And if you can do a problem like this, I think you're in good shape. How do you multiply polynomials like that? What do you got to do with the 5x? Distribute that through. So 5x times 2x squared would be 10x to the third. 5x times negative 3x would be negative 15x. 5x times 4 would be 20x. Then what do I have to do? Send the negative 1 through. So negative 1 times that would be negative 2x. Oh, negative 2x squared. And then negative 1 times a negative 3x would be plus 3x. Negative 1 times 4, negative 4. Last step, combine like terms. So I'd have 10x to the third. I've got, wait, that should be squared, shouldn't it? I've got negative 17x squared, 23x's, and a 4. Simple enough? Um, What's the shortcut to do 3x minus 4 squared? What's 3 squ 3x squared? That'd be 9x squared, right? And you got to do negative 4 squared, which would be positive 16. How do you find that middle term? You multiply them together, 3x times negative 4, and times it by 2, which would be negative 24x. Anybody remember what that's called? Yeah, it's a perfect square trinomial. Uh, what about 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 4? What's that going to be? It's going to be 9x squared and a minus 16. Is there going to be a middle term? Nope, because the middle term cancels. It's just 9x squared minus 16, and you're done. That's the difference of two squares. That's basically the whole chapter, guys. Um, I mean, you got the, basically, if you know your exponent properties and you can simplify those things, you're in good shape. Um, and then outside of that, just make sure you can uh, multiply your exponents or multiply your polynomials, name your polynomials. Okay? All right. Keep working on your reviews. You've got till, so your guys' exam will be Wednesday. Sixth hour is Friday. Miss uh, Clark's would be Thursday, and then uh, I will be accepting work until Friday at 11. At 11 o'clock, computer goes off, and we're done for the year. All right?